Okay, bear with me for just a second while you stare at some still photos of the finished product here. I didn't do a great job of recording every step along the way. So just as a intro, um, this is the build process for a little trailer dolly that I made largely from recycled rototiller parts. And then also the smallest 2000 pound ATV winch that you can buy from, from Harbor Freight. So um, I will try and jump in with some explanation in areas where I skipped over and don't, don't have good video. So um, hang on, stay tuned. Got the spindle chucked up in my little Harbor Freight mini lathe. Um, cut off the outer flange with a bandsaw. So now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. say a couple things about the drivetrain um, since this was the most challenging part for me to at least conceptualize and I didn't like exactly what a lot of the other guys were doing I'm sure if you're at all like me you've already googled this 40 million times and seen a bunch of ideas but most of them that I saw utilized like a regular garbage cartwheel um, and the problem with these is most of them are designed to be just that cartwheels to spin on an axle with a bearing they're not designed to be driven wheels um, so you, most people ended up adapting this to make some sort of drive hub um, that they could that could adapt. Um, I chose to go a different way. Um, what I ended up doing was uh, I bought a clapped out um, rototiller, and the reason I did that was mostly for this piece. Two things. One is I already have the sprocket nicely welded on there, um, but the other thing is it's this axle is designed to drive much bigger and better wheels um, with a cotter pin uh, already in there so I'm basically set up um, to, to drive those wheels with this sort of pre-made assembly um, so for a few bucks I was able to you know basically salvage the parts from a rototiller might be a couple of the pieces in that carcass that are that are useful um, but you already saw me turn down the spool on this old Harbor Freight winch. So that's the other component of this. Um, so now I've machined off this flange, which allows me to use one of these two sprockets. These came from Nitro Train Chain. Nitro Chain. They're about 15 bucks a piece, and you can get them in a whole bunch of different uh, tooth counts. Um, I have a couple different ones here. But I'm not sure exactly with the gear ratio and what um, how fast I want this thing to go. So. Uh, I think because also I had to do a minimum $25 order from Nitro, I just went ahead and got two. Um, but these are nice. They're on there with big, heavy, um, big, heavy set screws. Um, it's a one and a quarter or 1.25 inch diameter, um, which fits pretty closely. There's a little tiny bit of of slop in there, as you can see. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. I've got some. Um, some bearing retaining compounds, some Loctite 660 that I'm going to use. Um, I think that's the number. Might shim it if I have to, but I think with those set screws, it'll be really fine. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, probably machine out a little recess for those. But that should allow me to move this left and right as I need to, depending on where I want the motor set up uh, relative to the to the axle. The only drawback about this is um, with this setup is this guy obviously is going to be centered in the middle of the dolly, so I can't push it over to one side against the against the wheel like the other so that means my chain has to be right in the middle um, that could be a little bit of an issue we'll see as I lay it out 
All right, since we're talking about the drivetrain, I'm going to jump ahead here to the first sort of rolling chassis mock-up. Um, this is purely to uh, check sprocket size and, and overall speed. So what I've got is a temporary configuration. You can see the motor is mounted, but um, just on there temporarily with, with some C-clamps. You can also see I've got both uh, big and small sprocket on there because I just like I said don't know which way I'm going to go and it's easier to put them both on there because um, you got to take it all apart to assemble that system so um, yeah I'm going to slap the battery on there and get it wired up for a temporary test just a pure speed test back in a minute alright quick test with the uh, controller temporarily wired in this with the large sprocket. I think that's a decent uh, walking pace. Um, cool thing is with this temporary configuration, get a little wheelie pop. Ooh, man down. All right, so jumping ahead a little bit since the last temporary configuration. You can see a couple of uh, improvements. Um, primarily, I've installed the tower. Um, the ball hitch will eventually go on that flat surface on the top. Uh, but what I really want to show you at this point is how the motor is attached relative to the drive shaft. Um, you can see I've got this plate on there. Um, and I went ahead and cut some slots in the mounting plate so that that motor can be moved up and down to take up some chain slack. Um, right now it's it's nice and tight, um, really good. Um, I noticed in the temporary configuration there's quite a lot of slop in there in part from, from chain slack and then also weirdly enough um, on these axles even with those cotter pins there's still quite a lot of slop um, which is fine but anyway so that's where we are at this point. Only couple things left to do is um, add the, uh, the handle, which is what this set of pieces is for. Um, and yeah, and then drill a hole for a mounting point for the ball. So stay tuned. Uh, last step was um, to put the handle on. Uh, battery semi-permanently mounted on the front. I think I mentioned that the drivetrain was harvested from an old rototiller. Second most handy piece was the handle there. Um, had to do a little bit of welding just to adapt that handle from a curved mounting surface to my flat mounting surface. Okay, since I didn't um, film it, I just wanted to point to these still photos again and, and show you one modification I made to the tower. Uh, originally, I had planned to mount the trailer ball running the very top of the tower right above the axles so that all of the weight would be straight down onto the axles. And I thought that would make it pivot a little bit easier. Um, it turned out with this particular trailer configuration, that, that was a little bit too far back. And I was getting some interference from the trailer jack, which is mounted pretty far forward on that, on that tongue. So um, I put this plate on the top and that allowed me to move the trailer ball forward. Um, it didn't really seem to sacrifice too much in the way of turnability and it did have the sort of the unintended benefit of being allowing me to kind of lever the ball underneath the tongue and, and sort of easily pop the ball into the tongue. So that actually turned out to be kind of nice. Um, but the way it's made, you could put it in either configuration. Again, no video of this install, but I did want to at least mention sort of the last technical hurdle for me, which was getting the control system set up. Um, I mentioned earlier in the text that, that the winch comes with a really crummy controller, um, but I wanted to make sure I could come up with a system that would allow me to keep two hands on the handle and, you know, for just sort of safety purposes or whatever, because you're obviously dealing with heavy rolling stuff. Um, so what I ended up doing was installing an aftermarket solenoid and winch controller. It's just like an ATV controller. Um, I'll put up a link to it. Um, I just got it on Amazon. It's like 30 bucks. But anyway, this allows me to use uh, a thumb control for forward and backward. And then also I did wire in a full on off battery cutoff switch just so, you know, it can charge it or whatever and not worry about any kind of leak down or anything weird happening. 
Um, so that's just sort of the basics. The guts of the solenoid and the wiring is mounted underneath the, the tower below the trailer ball.